we have made our second album. Uh, it's called Postcards. It is about the British seaside. So it tells lots of stories about uh, the seaside as a, as a place to live and a place to work. So it talks about fishing communities. Um, it also talks about the excitement and the glamour of the British seaside, uh, especially in the period like the 20s and the 30s and whatnot, uh, when it was like the place to go and stuff like that. But also goes into the modern day where it has a certain sadness to it. A lot of those British seaside towns like Blackpool and Scarborough, uh, where those paints are starting to fade and peel a little bit off the walls as a bit of a memory uh, of those times that have that have now gone. I think the reason why the coast is such an important theme is because we live on an island, so the coast is not only all around us, but no matter how far you are up from the coast, it's a part of your life. You know, we go on holidays to the coast. Um, lots of lots of well, anyone's childhood mem memories are kind of revolve around going to the coast for holidays. People go to the coast to retire. So it's this kind of ever ever present atmosphere that we've got in this island of being close to the coast and close to the sea. We decided to look at the seaside uh, because we found that we had a, a, something in common. Uh, we all found a real melancholy uh, about uh, about the seaside. We remembered uh, our trips there with our respective families uh, when we were growing up and whatnot, and when we were kids. Uh, and there's a real sadness when you go and revisit those places. It was really important to us, I think, as well, that for this second album we tried to do something that we had more experience of, because in the first record, uh, This Way to Power, which is all about um, you know, imagined histories, essentially, it's about the 1800s, it's about mill communities, which we read up on and kind of studied and tried to immerse ourselves in as much as we could, whereas this time, <clears throat> the seaside is something that we have... We have lived, we have seen, and it's been really good fun to go and visit it again and whatnot and, and kind of share our stories with one another that have led to the sounds and the stories and the lyrics that, that formulate this record. Uh, none of us are from Yorkshire originally, but I think because we've all uh, lived here a few years, um, we feel a kind of natural affinity with the Yorkshire coastline that we perhaps don't feel with the Blackpool one. Um, we all take great um, inspiration from it. And when we were writing the songs, we wanted to um, have a sense of places that we knew. So uh, the songs range from the, the pier at Whitby down to the caravan parks at Filey. And um, also through uh, gathering the sounds at places like Scarborough, it kind of, again, kind of enforces that sense of place, um, which I guess uh, makes it more real for us. So we went to uh, both Whitby and Scarborough, I think maybe separated by actually several months in the end. But we went to kind of immerse ourselves in the stories and the environment of, of the coast and the buildings and the architecture and the people and the, the noises and the sounds and all this stuff going on. And uh, we were lucky enough that the days we went, it, they, well, they were actually packed. So there was lots of things going on sound wise uh, and in terms of little bits of inspiration for stories and things. We went to cafes, we went for walks on the pier, we went down to the beach and recorded the sound of pebbles and sand and the sea coming in and out. Um, but over the course of a couple of days we built up a massive bank of, of recorded sound that we can then use, or we did use in fact, to turn into kind of grooves and uh, little acoustic elements that form the basis of lots of our songs. We just had fish and chips, uh, we're about to walk to the end of the pier. Uh, maybe pop in and play some 2p machine. Oh, things. I'll have to change your home. Uh, heard that before. different approaches um, in terms of how we use the uh, gathered sounds this time. Um, on Coast is Clear, Rick knew that he wanted the sound of a steam train, so we went to the Worth Valley Railway and recorded that. And uh, once it had been processed, it kind of formed the rhythm track for that song that we then recorded too. Um, that was quite like, in a way, the um, machinery noises at Star Mill that we used on the first album, because they obviously had a natural rhythm that um, you know suggested the time signatures. Um, on other songs, for example, Ghosts, Ivan formed the loop for that out of just disparate sounds that, that we'd gathered at the seaside. So, you know, a coin uh, tapping a sea mine, or um, 
rubbing rope that we found along the uh, the shore. Um, and then when he'd formed that uh, that loop, the the sound of that very much influenced how the the song was written on top of it. Just the magic right here. We were very fortunate that, uh, that our friend Gary Chilton uh, came on board again and he was much more involved this time than he was last time. Uh, this time he recorded virtually everything, uh, mixed everything and was, was heavily involved in the mastering process uh, and he was really, really pivotal to getting the sound. Uh, of this record, which is quite a complex one um, because the sound palette is is very wide. Again, we've used orchestral instruments and got some of our friends to come and, and play for us on there. And similarly, we've used the found sounds from the seaside, uh, such as noises from you know noises from the seagulls and from the sea itself. Uh, and it, one of his jobs uh, was to try and blend all that together to make it into something that that people could could understand. I guess. Good morning, Gary Chilton. Good morning. Uh, are you excited about our day? No, because I think we lost all of it. What was supposed to drive me through that building? <laughs> Can I help? Uh, Gary, what's your in Oh, you <laughs> you've got a massive strip line on your head that makes you look like some weird Jesus character. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'm just working out some uh, some chords and some inversions and stuff for a song we're recording today called "The Coast Is Clear," uh, and it is a song about a character who, in my mind at least, and we might try and do this with the, w the way the kind of soundscape of it works, is from the mill town of our previous album, uh, and he is packed up and he is on uh, the train platform waiting to go on his holiday to the seaside and last week we recorded loads of steam train noises and stuff and today we record the kind of band parts of it um, when we first talked about the idea of doing stuff about the seaside I kind of made it very clear to you guys that I was going to have to do a Beach Boys song of some description uh, and so this is kind of my uh, doffing my straw boater to uh, the Wilsons um, so uh, yeah it's kind of it's vaudeville surf you heard it here first. It's a whole new genre. It's a whole new genre. We've started today. Uh, I think we should let HMV know that they're going to have to get a new... Um, <laughs> get get a some new, new things thing. made. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Vaudeville Surf, you heard it here first. With your lovely uke of truth. It's actually a full-size um, acoustic, and I've just grown. <laughs> uh, what songs are we recording today? What are you playing at the moment? Uh, playing a song called Seaside Mystery Man, 
Plenty Open brackets. I claim my five pounds. Yeah. Exclamation mark. Close brackets. <laughs> Why don't you tell the fans what it's all about? Um, in the 30s and 40s, um, a newspaper ran a thing where they sent out a guy under the name of Lobby Ludd, it was kind of the alias, uh, to a seaside destination. And um, they basically tell their readers where he was going to be and they had to go and find him. And it's basically the story of um, going out and trying to find this guy to tap him on the shoulder and say, you are Lobby Ludd and I claim my five pounds. And it's kind of um, kind of going for that really kind of funky, vaudeville sound uh, with you and piano. And, um, it should be one of the kind of more light-hearted numbers on the record. One of many light-hearted numbers one on the record. One of many, yeah. <laughs> um, and it should be good fun to record, I hope. Okay, we're all set to record now. Here's me at this lovely piano, and it is a lovely piano. Uh, and then uh, you might just be able to see Ivan through that little gap. That's his little room. And then up there, you might just be able to see Gary and Spence getting set up. So this way we can all see one another. Uh, kind of. Though only just... Give us a wave, Ivan! There he is. Lovely. Okay, we've just finished uh, Coast is Clear. It was incredibly difficult. Uh, we did it in about, maybe about 10 takes, maybe? There and thereabouts. Uh, it's a really difficult song to play. We're now moving on to a new song. Uh, it's called Boats on the Bay. Uh, this song is about um, a pub that is uh, kind of is set in a sort of more modern period of the album. Uh, and it's about a guy that works in the pub and he sees all these tourists coming in and kind of trying to drink in the atmosphere of kind of the seafaring kind of old stories and old tales and things. Um, but he obviously sees that, you know, there's no, there's no fishermen anymore and all the boats there are just kind of sit in bottles or in pictures on the walls. So on this album we worked with uh, two really, really good visual artists called Gene McEwen and Robert Hope and they took the same inspiration as us and kind of went away to Robin Hood's Bay for a week and they made uh, basically a, a, a film that they projected and then took still images of that film and those still images are formed the basis of the artwork that we use for the album, they, they'll probably appear um, at gigs. Um, and um, kind of they're, they're available on the website if you want to go and have a look at those. But they um, so they put a lot of work into really kind of in the same way that we try to capture the feel of the seaside sonically. They've kind of in a very similar kind of glitchy, kind of objet trouvé kind of way. They've kind of pulled visual elements together to make a kind of collage of what the seaside's like. <laughs> One of the things that we're really proud of uh, with Postcards is that uh, This Way to Power was very much a kind of, we didn't know how it was going to sound when we started. We were playing around, we were experimenting, and <clears throat> for us some of the things that we like about that record the most aren't actually on it very much because we only worked out how to do them at the end of the process. Postcards, however, is a completely different kettle of fish because we knew where we were heading when we started out. Uh, and the, the mix between those found sounds and the songwriting of myself and Spence and Ivan, uh, the soundscape stuff, the orchestral elements as well, and all the storytelling, I think on this record have really, we've, we've raised the bar for ourselves a little bit and I have absolutely no idea what we're going to do next. Right. 